So uh, thank you so much for joining us for this interview now. Uh, we're really excited to have you here, so thank you. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited. And uh, you just told me you know me since like 2016, right? 2016, something yeah. like that. Yeah, it makes me so happy. And you guys came to my, my live show and... It was amazing, <laughs> honestly. Aww. It was really good. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. <laughs> so. So, uh, should we just jump right into it? Yeah. Into it. Okay, awesome. So, first of all, uh, congratulations on your new single, Tokyo 2020. Thank congratulations. you. Congratulations. Um, it's an amazing song. It's very catchy. I've been running it back, listening to it a lot of times. So, yeah, I've been enjoying it a lot. So, I just wanted to ask because 2020 was two years ago, right? Mm -hmm. So, does 2020 have a special significance to you? Yes, definitely. Um, the year 2020 is very memorable year, not just me, but all of us. But for me, it's like uh, I felt the rock bottom mm -hmm. um, because 2018, I moved to the United States to start my music career again there. And uh, by the time 20, early 2020, I was like, I was so excited about the new release and I, I had a uh, show in Chicago and in Philly and the radio show is coming and I was like so excited and I was like oh finally like time has come for me but all of a sudden um, pandemic happened and I need to come back to Japan so I was like I lost my hope for the future and I didn't know what to do and um, I was struggled mentally and physically. I lost my voice and I couldn't sing for two months. And yeah, it was it was really hard time for me. So, but uh, it was important for me to go solo. So I had a chance to redefine what what's important for me, mm -hmm. and it changed my perspective and like uh, point of view that something uh, plains me for a long time. Um, so because of the 2020 was so rough and tough, I could uh, write a song like the Tokyo 2020. So it was very important year for me. Hmm. Um, how would you say that working with musicians based out in like Philadelphia mm -hmm. and in the US um, affected the process of making that song? Uh, so the producer of the Tokyo 2020, he's a um, musician and producer. Uh, his name is Corey Van Hart, based in Philadelphia. And I've been working with him since 2016, and we've been touring together in Japan and United States. And we've been uh, he produced some of the song in the past, and so um, it was really important for me to. Uh, write a song, someone I can fully trust for a Tokyo 2020, because Tokyo 2020 is a very uh, personal song for me. And uh, when I first heard uh, the song, uh, the, when I first heard um, the track, Tokyo 2020, he sent me a da -da 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 -da. When I heard that intro, I was like, this is, this is it. This is it. And I really felt that um, the sound was reflective of the time. Mm -hmm. Because at the time, to, uh, in 2020 and 2021, we were, we, uh, we were not really happy. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to have a hope. And I wanted to have an optimistic energy. And the song has that energy so yeah definitely he really affected me to write the song mm, yeah i felt like there was a nice kind of matching feeling you know the song feels like very international very open right mm -hmm. and then obviously tokyo 2020 you yep. know, the name the olympics this idea mm -hmm. of the world coming together yeah yep. um, you know i felt like it fit, it fit quite nicely mm -hmm. to have you know the international kind of element and having um you know, international production mm -hmm. over a sort of Japanese track as well and English vocals. 
So um, all of your singles in the past uh -huh. have ended up on their respective albums. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So uh, with Tokyo 2020 mm -hmm. being your single, your most recent single, um, can we expect some new now, now Yoshioka music in the future? So uh, I would say yes and no, <laughs> uh, because I think I'm going to follow the same energy of the song, energy uh, from Tokyo 2020. It's like optimistic, optimistic yeah. and hope. But uh, however, the sound and style will be different, even though the, um, the, the feeling itself is, is the same. Because right now for me, all about the like optimistic and, and love and care and forgiveness and those energy is something that I'm looking for right now for the, mm -hmm. for the next project. I see. Oh, thank you. So last week we saw the release of the acoustic version of the song. Mm. Um, I actually think I prefer the acoustic version, like the really? studio version. I really like the acoustic, just stripped back. I think uh -huh. it lets your emotions come forward mm -hmm. more. Uh, obviously live, it's amazing with the full band. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what inspired you to release two versions? Uh, so I wanted to have the choices for the listener, mm. for sure, because it's like, and, and also I, Personally, I really like acoustic version. Mm -hmm. It's like an artist release original version, mm -hmm. the full band and the full sound. But like when it when the songs uh, strip down to the acoustic, just the piano and the vocal is more personal. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I want audience to feel the uh, the song twenty the the song Talk at twenty twenty so personal to the listener. And actually, I recorded that song at my living room. Oh, really? So I was so I was so like relaxed and comfortable. So that's why you felt that like my <laughs> relaxed. Intimacy, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, there's a really nice key change at the end as well, right? In the outro, when you just write it out, like it's so yeah, pretty. I love it. I love it. I love it. At the launch party, after everybody played solos and was improvising for a bit, you started singing a bit of Chicken Grease by D'Angelo, right? Yeah. Uh, and you also used D'Angelo as your entry music, like when you came in. Mm -hmm. um, how has D'Angelo influenced you in your music making? Um, Rian, I, I'm a big fan of D'Angelo's um, music and he influenced me a lot. I covered so many uh, D'Angelo songs before, so I definitely, when I'm writing a song, his essence is, is in, in my music. But then uh, I remember when he, he came to perform 2015 mm. at the uh, Summer Sonic, yes. and at the time I was performing Summer Sonic too, and next day he was performing and I was so excited, and I went to the, his live show and I really liked his performance flows, mm -hmm. and it, I really like how he highlighted uh, all the musicians on the stage. And he was just kept playing one song for fifteen minutes and just same right, groove yeah. and same beats and getting to the zone. Mm -hmm. It's like the the energy and the feeling is something that I was looking for, and mm -hmm. that's why I wanted to have that energy into my my live show too because it's like. Recently, go to the live show. It's not. It's it's not a normal thing. Mm -hmm. Like you need yeah. to have that. Like, mm. like a real reason. Yeah. yeah. So I wanted to create something that like an audience can watch only that night. Mm -hmm. The all the musicians play the solos. That's not. They cannot play the same thing next day. So that's why those. Um, like a solo section, and that song is really important for my live show. Absolutely. Well, this segues perfectly into the next question. So, you've been performing on stages for nearly a decade now. Mm -hmm. So, and it really shows when you're on stage. Um, you really captivate the crowd, and it's just quite the experience, like you were saying. Mm -hmm. So, I wanted to ask do you have any rituals mm -hmm. that you do before performing? Um, my ritual would be I, before I get on the stage, I look up and pray and be thankful because um, doing the live show is not, it's a very, it's a miracle thing. Mm -hmm. I couldn't really think that way for, for my past because it's, it's became my, like a, I was doing the tour and the festivals and everything was, became my normal, mm -hmm. normal thing. Yeah. But, 
because of the pandemic, I couldn't be able to be performing on the stage for 10 months. Right. I start to more appreciate the time on stage and it's, this is not the usual thing. This is a miracle. Mm -hmm. So I look up and but just be thankful. And uh, the another thing I do is keep pep talk. Mm -hmm. So before I get on the stage, um, Ben and I uh, talking each other and mm -hmm. doing the like, uh, <laughs> And I tell my band that like I don't care about your mistakes that you that you may going to do on the stage. I don't really care, but the, I care about I, I want you guys to enjoy. Mm -hmm. Like let's look at eye each other mm -hmm. and enjoy the moment, and audience going to feel it. So I tell my uh, band, but at the same time I tell myself too. Mm, so. I see. It really does show. Everyone looks like they're having so much fun. The solos, it's just, yeah, everyone's having so much fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he was, he was. Yeah, absolutely. After the show as well, um, we were like hanging around for a while and I noticed yeah. that you came now to talk to some of your most devoted fans. Mm -hmm. um, someone even brought you flowers and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah! It was <laughs> amazing. So lovely. Um, how would you describe your relationship with your fan base? And also, uh, what does it feel like to know you're that popular now? Some real hardcore fans. Um, I so I in twenty twenty I started to have a, a membership. Mm. It's like a fan club. Yeah. Mm. And uh, the you guys saw the the devoted fans is the, the mm. my membership members mm. and they saw me through one of the hardest time in twenty twenty mm. and they supported me and loved me no matter what. So I really thankful for them and. I used to think, uh, I used to feel um, fans were distant mm -hmm. and I need to do a good job for them. But recently, uh, my fans became more like my friends and family. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm, when I'm on the stage, I recognize some, some of my fans in the crowd and I'm like, Oh yeah, I see all friends and like, oh, thank you so much for coming mm -hmm. and um, I feel, I, I think it's not, not about like being popular or uh, um, become famous, but I feel like I'm making a, my community mm -hmm. and that makes me more strong than mm -hmm. before because I don't need to worry about like, oh, like, did I do a good job or not? Right, right. But they're like my friends and family, so let, let's have some good time together. Thank you so much for coming to my living room. It's like that, that kind of beautiful thing. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. That's a beautiful thing as well. Mm. Wow. Very nice. Um, so the hook uh, for your single mm -hmm. starts with, uh, if I win, would you lose? And ends with, my game is mine, but I'm trying to win together. So I'm sure a lot of people can resonate with these lyrics. So I wanted to ask you, how do you reconcile the competitiveness of the music industry and your own personal ambition with your desire to see everyone succeed? So right now my goal is to become the authentic, mm. the best authentic me, mm. because no one can be me better than me, right? I was following the, like, a. Um, material success. Ah, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, numbers and stuff. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, I was trying not to compare myself with others and start to focusing on my skills. Mm -hmm. So my goal is to become best version of myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm fighting with myself. Like yesterday, it's like, I, and tomorrow will I be better than mm -hmm. today? And mm -hmm. it's like when I start to focusing on those things and everything. Uh, makes it easier and I believe um, if everyone plays their own games and their own succeed everyone wins mm -hmm. and it's easy to say and difficult to do yeah. it mm -hmm. and I was struggling a lot but um, like I said um, because of the pandemic mm -hmm. my perspective has changed right. and um, music became more fun, fun thing for me right now for sure I, I really resonate with what you said about pursuing your best self. It's something I tried to live by too. And like you said, it's really hard. So I really connected with that as well. It's really hard. 
we, we all know it, but yeah, it's, yeah it's, it is very difficult to do it. Yeah. Absolutely. It's nice that it's only uh, on you though, you know, it's you versus yourself. So yeah. It's nice. Yes. So my favorite of your albums is 2016, this is The Truth. Uh, and this is the album that got me into your music. Wow. And on this version here, on the Tower version, mm -hmm. there is a remix mm -hmm. of Make the Change, which was your first single. Yep. Um, by James Poyser of The Roots and <laughs> countless other legendary, you know, Neo Soul and just yeah. absolute legend of the game. Shout out James. Yeah. Yeah. How did that remix come about? And what was your reaction the first time you heard the um, remix? So the first time when I heard the remix, I was like, Yes! And I really <laughs> love the, the sound of the fruit. Mm -hmm. And in the middle section, there is a slow down section. Yes. And he did a killing, killer arrangement for yes. it. It's like a, I encounter another another world. Mm -hmm. And I really love it. And um, so, and also um, how I started to work with James is. Um, my producer, Naoki Yamanouchi, yes. he sent a message through his official website. Right. And he introduced my music and he asked uh, James that, like, uh, are you interested in working with now? But imagine you sent a message to official website and mm. he replies. Yes. It's wow. not a normal thing, That's right? That's not, yeah. Mm. It would have been ignored usually, right? So Naoki and I, I was like, what he replied, <laughs> <laughs> and he, I, I think he just, he really dedicated to the music, and he just, if he likes the music, he he's going to work with it. Yeah. So I really, I really respect him as a as a musician. And when I went to New York, he invited us to the Tonight Show, mm -hmm. and I saw uh, the the roots. Yeah. Right. yeah. So I really respect him as a musician, as a, but at the same time as a person, he's such a sweet person. Awesome, yeah. Wow. I've seen The Roots maybe twice. Really? And I think the first time was maybe the best concert I've ever been to. In my life. It was incredible. So. <laughs> oh, I'm so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I might see everyone, all the bands usually skip my hometown. So I've oh. only seen Questlove. He's come by himself and that was amazing. Really? Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. Um, so you've been based in New York mm -hmm. for a while, uh, you're back in Tokyo. Um, how are things different creatively working in Tokyo instead of being in New York? Um, in Japan, I find myself to writing on my own. Mm. And I now I have a, like a little studio in my house and decided to write on my own more, more than before and that gave me um, trust my creativity mm. and give me a, a freedom to express. So, in the beginning, I was like, I need inspiration. I want to write with other mm. other artists and like the. But it was really important time for me to to um, sit down and write whatever I want to write. So, yep, something yeah. like that. <laughs> working from home like the making music from home is always really difficult for yeah. me mm -hmm. i really prefer to have like a separate space yeah. to make something right so yes having like a dedicated home studio must be a, an interesting experience <laughs> yeah. Yeah. especially when you first start yes yes yeah. it was it was and uh what have you been listening to recently ah what am i listening to so um i've been listening to the a playlist that Sweet Soul Records uh, does, Eclectic, mm. the playlist. So, who, who am I listening to? Ah, I've been listening to Yeba. Mm -hmm. I've been listening to um, Snow Allegra. Snow Allegra? Yes, Snow oh, Allegra. Nice, nice. And Ali Lennox. Oh, nice, nice. And who else? I've been listening to. Um, yum, 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 What am I listening to? I mean... Oh! You... you know? Oh, you know, yeah. And Umi. Oh, Umi, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with the uh, Japanese uh, singer, right? Yes, yes. And she, oh, I think she's a mix. She's mixed. Yeah, yeah, she's mixed, yeah. She just released an album, I think, or... Oh, yes, I yeah, think so. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. A lot of R&B then. <laughs> yes, definitely. I have uh, one more question. Yep. Um, do you have any, I guess, advice for a younger, like a newer artist starting out? Mm -hmm. Any specific advice you have to offer to them? Um, I, I think I was so lucky to, um, when I started my music, I met my producer, Naoki Yamanouchi, and I've been working with him past 10 years and he asked me some question when I before I released my first album he asked me about like why people need to listen to your music what is your desire what what is your goal and all the simple questions that he asked me and I couldn't really answer those questions but I took time, like two, three months, I was thinking again and again and again uh, to get the answer. And I was so happy and I was so lucky to have those answers before I, um, before I released my albums. Mm -hmm. Because uh, when you become an, art, an artist, you are going to hear a lot of like a sweet advice mm. oh if you are going to work with this person you can be so successful or if you're going to do the um a little bit more pop or mm. it's like you uh, need to do this style mm. this style you will be successful mm. but if you have the answer that like uh, this is the kind of artist i want to be this is the kind of message that i want to deliver to the audience you don't need to 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 listen to those voices and just go to your um, your way, trust your way, because it's so difficult to handle your artist life. Mm. <laughs> because I have been there, mm. but I am so lucky that my um, label and my producer never uh, let me do those things mm. and. Um, I'm so lucky to do the thing that only I really love. Mm -hmm. And end of the day, that's that's only things matters. Mm -hmm. So absolutely, Thank, that's very great advice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, uh, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, we appreciate you coming by and uh, doing this interview with us. Thank you so much. Yeah. Best of luck. Yeah, best of luck. Whatever comes next. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.